Hello, welcome to a, another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called River's Edge Sunrise, and it is a 5x10. Um, if you are one of my most loyal of subscribers, you will have seen that I put a video up of this on my website. Oh, probably about two months ago, something like that. Um, and I've been very lax with uh, actually processing videos for some of my newer things. So I thought, well, it is Saturday and I did promise you a video. So I'm going to put this up because I know most of you haven't seen it. And if you have seen it, it's a whole new opportunity to listen to me ramble. Um, at a whole new time. Um, same painting, new rambling. <laughs> anyway, I hope this is uh, Saturday here. It's the 12th of January. Hope you're having a good new year. Um, things are going pretty well here. Um, in the studio today, uh, just doing a little prep work this morning, but when I get back, uh, I think I'll be taking on a new painting, and who knows, it might be another 5x10. Um, I have quite a few scenes set up, and it's been they've been set up for a while. I've been uh, a couple things have happened uh, since I set those scenes up. I've uh, I got into a big redo uh, mode, which when it grabs me can usually go for a month or so. And then I recently got into doing a past masters mode, and uh, just recently actually just kind of the roll of the dice whether I would have kept going with that as I. Sort of said in my last video, I wasn't sure, but uh, yeah, I basically rolled the dice and um, I came up to do originals. So I'm back in, back in doing originals. I did one yesterday. It's okay, and just kind of thinking about some of the things I might want to chat about today that uh, could help you out if you are a person who's trying to do paintings and uh, kind of what I was. Uh, well, let's just talk about what I was doing yesterday. So it's another, it's a little 5x10 like this, a panoramic scene. Um, uh, a scene that uh, I have painted in the past, but not in that format. And, <coughs> pardon me. Imagine a sort of panoramic scene. There's kind of a little stream off in the side, and a little clump of trees above that on our right-hand side. Um, and then a meadow. And... Um, behind the meadow, a sky with like um, sort of sunsetty clouds. Um, the the uh, well, the colors aren't so important to what I'm talking about, so I won't really get into that. But in this meadow, uh, there uh, was, in the reference anyway, a big clump of trees, almost in the exact middle of the meadow, which would have been the middle of the painting. And uh, I hadn't really edited these out uh, when working with the reference in Photoshop. In fact, so many times um, I think I can make that sort of thing work. But this sort of leads us to a rule of thumb that I have, which is like, if you've got a scene, you want to be very careful about plopping trees dead in the center of it, unless it's what I call a tree portrait. And I've done those before where the tree is the subject. Usually in a case like that, the tree will be filling up a good portion of the painting. It'll be very clear that it's the subject. Um, in this particular case, I'd have to say the subject was more the uh, little clump of trees on the right with the stream by it. Um, and uh, so I actually did, uh, this is like maybe the 20th time I've tried to do this. I actually did paint in these uh, clump of trees in the middle of the field and um, but you know the, the great thing about painting a lot and and having failed so many times is I know that doesn't work it doesn't work for me that's not to say you couldn't make it work um, there's I think good reasons why it doesn't work um, because it messes with the flow of the, um, the vision in this particular case uh, what I did was uh, I ended up figuring out that it wasn't going to work in any way shape or form um, and so I just moved them way over to our left, but because it's panoramic, we end up with quite a long 
skinny meadow with not much going on in it. And what I did so far to deal with that is just a couple different variations of tones in that meadow. But I'm going to have to analyze this painting while it's drying and think about that. And um, I wouldn't say the painting came out tremendously awesome. It's not bad, though. I think it's saleable. Um, but it would have been better, um, actually, when I was going through my, my reference uh, folio, um, something was bothering me about it. But it was the first one that came up. It was the first one I thought about doing. And so I thought, well, I'm going to work my way through all these. I'm going to go ahead and do it. But now I know why. I had this tree issue. I should have dealt with that before really even thinking about um, starting the painting. But I'm getting smarter. Uh, actually pretty pretty slow at getting smarter if you ask me but but I do eventually learn and so I just just thought I'd pass that on to you now it's not so much that the lesson I'm passing on to you is that uh, tree clumps of trees in the middle of a field when there's other things around on the left and the right aren't going to work that's not so much the lesson the lesson is um, <clears throat> Learn from your experiences. Listen to uh, what uh, that uh, inner voice is trying to tell you, which is usually based on some type of experience, and follow that, and you will, you know, learn from your failures uh, better. And what I'm really glad about is I actually, <laughs> in the past, would have maybe uh, taken the whole painting through to, uh, you know, that 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 first color pass and not made the change until um, have. Uh, having looked at it in the drawing uh, area for a while and deciding that it wasn't working so I'm encouraged by that but it would have been better if I just known that it wasn't going to work in the first place for me and uh, <coughs> pardon me a bit of a frog in my throat um, why doesn't it work um, okay so you've got this sort of kind of horizon -y line of the back of the meadow um, you've got a, a, a main clump of trees on our right a little bit of trees on the left it doesn't work because it messes with the whole flow so you get this one thing plopped in the center the eye stops there and some of the solutions you could do would be like, in fact, one of the reasons why it did, wouldn't work at all is because it was a um, fairly small painting. If it was a bit larger, I could have just spent more time defining a clump of trees, moved it um, slightly off to our left, and maybe kind of got it to work that way. But as it stood, uh, there was no way to make it work, so I just painted it out. But it was actually closing off the whole center portion of the scene all the way down to the bottom part and so I could have at the very least just opened up that bottom part but um, and I tried that uh, however just this sort of thing doesn't work it usually doesn't work not for me and it probably won't work so well for you either it's just not a good plan so there's a little insight for you um, geez we could maybe even talk about pa the painting we're looking at um, based on a scene uh, that I took a reference photo of about two years ago. Very simple river scene, a very boring. Uh, but however, you can see the subject of this painting is clearly the sky and the beautiful um, yellow and orange offset against the purple. That's what makes this a nice looking painting. And we're at Riverside, so I've kind of got these trees in the foreground, almost in silhouette, near silhouette. Um, and we're we're going right by them and focusing on the beauty of the um, the sunrise and uh, that's all been installed, folks. I mean, it wasn't there. Uh, it was morning, funny enough, when I took this uh, reference when I took the reference photo that the painting was um, sort of keyed off of. But um, it was a foggy morning. There wasn't much going on, and I kind of incorporated some of the foggy aspects into the distance. Um, but it was just grays and mists um, when I decided to push it in this direction and this is one of the hallmarks of uh, what I do in tonalism in general which is not so fixated on capturing a particular place 
um, in a particular way. It's more fixated on a, an emotional response to the landscape and to the time of day or weather conditions um, oh, and the feelings that those inspire in you as the perceiver or in this case the painter since I'm the painter um, now and what I do is quite synthetic and sy not synthetic in a plastic way but synthetic in a created way in that I take disparate elements and I bring them together and the thing that unifies them is my emotional feeling for the scene and what I'm trying to convey that in a nutshell is what I define as a tonalist approach um, many people could define a tonalist approach as just being that you've rubbed a color over the entire painting and so it's all toned yellow or it's all toned purple or um, and there is something to that the fact that all of the colors in the painting harmonize off of each other and there's no real discord everything is flowing from a um, sort of central um, color range and so in this case would be that violet reddish orange um, and then but we're getting into some warm brownish greens um, we're still not going off into some of the uh, like super bright yellows or super strong blues or even really those greens are just packed full of grays and reds they're only green um, in contrast to the scene we could just as easily put this uh, this color uh, you know somewhere else and it wouldn't be even perceived as green uh, I want to point out right in the video what I did right there is, is this painting was crooked my I painted that original and I really liked unfortunately I really liked the way that I I'd, I'd handle that bit on the uh, horizon in the uh, first color pass unfortunately it was crooked and so I had to get out my trusty t-square and fix it and you can see 90% of the uh, second pass of this painting is basically just dealing with that and um, I ended up being pretty happy with the painting in general and I uh, feel it's very successful uh, mostly because I achieved what I set out to do with that sky and that was the the subject the whole point of the painting anyway getting close to the end here thanks for joining me and if you've seen me paint this before thanks for joining me again um, just getting them out there I will be showing up hopefully midweek no actually it'll be next weekend because my computer is going into the shop so we'll see you in a week or so and um, I'll be bringing a new painting at that time so meanwhile do me a favor Please, take good care of yourself and your family, all your loved ones and friends, and uh, stay out of...